then Frosty had to do a call of nature. And you know what he did? Set, set, set. Good boy. Shake, shake. Good boy. Good boy. Came all the way upstairs, pushed open the bedroom door, came over to wake me up. Then he led me down the stairs to the front door, I opened the door, then he went out, then he did his duties. What do you think of that? Pretty smart dog, huh? Okay, Frosty. Here's some other bones for you. I'm going to put over here. Okay? Because right here we have to do uh, another math lesson. But if you want, you can take part. Uh oh, you're getting a hard time getting up. Okay, 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 okay. There you go. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. There you go, buddy. Okay. Okay. There's some bones right there. There you go, Frosty. You can have all those bones. Okay. Today, um, I want to talk a, a, a little bit more about. Um, summing an arithmetic series, uh, and particularly with the problem that Gauss had to do, or the problem that we kind of imagined that Gauss had to do when he was a young boy, and that was the problem of adding the numbers from 1 to 100. And Gauss managed to do that very easily, or possibly even in his head even, but nobody knows exactly how he did it. And last time, I told you one way that he might have done it. Um, but now I want to show you another way that he might have done it. Um, it turns out that adding the numbers between 1 and 100 was a problem that was well known to the Greeks. And um, because it's a problem that goes back to the very early days of counting. Now in the very, very early time of counting, when man was just learning to how to count, one thing that he used to count was pebbles. And um, if he had five sheep, he could say, that's how many sheep I have. And, or he could say, this is how many sheep I have. One hand of sheep. Five is kind of a small number. Maybe if he had nine sheep, he'd say, that's how many sheep I have. Or, or if the number was higher, he could use pebbles to, as a collection, to say, this is how many sheep I have. Now, the reason why the pebbles are nice, because the, first of all, the number could be really large, and you could still use the pebbles. Um, but the other thing is, is you, you, you don't forget, because they're always there. Let's say... So in the uh, book by Homer called the Odyssey, there was a cyclops that had captured all of uh, Odysseus's men, uh, and they, he was going to eat them all actually. In fact, I think he might have actually eaten one or two of them. And they were inside his cave. And uh, what the uh, cyclops did for business was he was a shepherd. Uh, he let sh he had sheep that he would let out to pasture every day. And then he would let them back into the cave at night. And the way the Cyclops would keep track of whether or not he was missing any sheep is every time one of the sheep would go out, he would take a pebble out of his pebble box or whatever. Then he'd make a collection of them for everyone that went out. Then he'd get a big pile of pebbles. Uh, and he would say, that's the number of sheep that are outside. He wouldn't actually have a number for that because the Cyclops didn't know how to count. Then when the sheep would come back, when they come back in, he would just take one pebble out of the pile until all the sheep were back in. Now, if there was still a pebble left, then he'd know that there was a sheep that had escaped. So, uh, that's why pebbles were very important in the history of counting. And we th th that story in the Odyssey is actually something that was passed down verbally from uh, really before writing, because it was originally just a verbal story, but it still told us that piece of information about how they counted. Um, so now another 
group of Greeks that were um, very important in counting with the Pythagoreans. The Pythagoreans, they were very, very, very um, crazy about numbers. And they used to do things with pebbles. Like they'd say, this is the number four. And they would make that number into all sorts of very pretty shapes. Like uh, the number four, it happens to be a square. Now, the smallest possible square that you could have, you might say number one. Now one, to us, we call that a number. To the Greeks, one, that wasn't a number at all, because obviously two or three or four, that might be called a number, but one is not really a number. They just call that the unit. But they didn't have any such thing as a number line or zero or negative numbers or anything like that. So anyway, for them, numbers really were just like two, three, four, and five, stuff like that. Um, but, so really four would have been really the first number that was a square number. And then they said, uh, they discovered the next square number, for example, that you have is nine. Nine is a square number because when you have nine objects, that's just, you, make, you can make a square out of those pebbles. Now, one of the things that the Pythagoreans noticed was that to make a square, a square number of, of, of uh, the first square number, which is four, you have to add the three to the number one. We talked a little bit about this before when we were talking about the nomen. You take three to the unit, you add to the unit three, and you get a, it's a square number four. If you add then five to the square number four, you get the square number nine. And that the five is the nomen to the, that square, which is a 2 by 2 square. Likewise, if you add 7 to uh, the square number 9, you get the square number called 16. And this is the nomen for the square number 9. And um, so the Pythagoreans realized that by adding the consecutive odd numbers on top of each other, you get all the square numbers. One is the first odd number, but the Greeks didn't call that the odd number, but the first odd number for them was three. You add three to get a square number. Then you add five to get a square number. Then you add seven to get a square number. And if you added a nine and 11, you'll, you'll get increasing values of square numbers. So this is actually a formula for the sum of the odd numbers. The sum of the odd numbers gives you a square number. So if you wanted the sum of the first four odd numbers, it would just be four times four, because it's a square number. Now, Greeks also discovered something else that would play with these pebbles. They started with, if you start with the number two. Now, in early, early times, even two wasn't considered a number. Two was considered a pair, because a pair is small enough, so it doesn't need to be a number. But by the time the Greeks came around, they had considered that two was actually a number, uh, and that the numbers started at two. Okay, now, if you take two, and then you add to it, and two could be considered to be the first even number, if you add to it four. So you start off with two, and you add four, you then get another uh, figure. It's not a square figure. This is a this is a, we call it a rectangle. It's two by three. It's almost a square because the two sides are, even though they're not equal to each other, they're only off by one. This is actually called an oblong. So the Greeks knew, and they played around with oblongs too, the Pythagoreans. If you add, if you start with two, and then you add the next even number, you get an oblong. And then if you add the next even number, which would be six, you would get the next oblong number. Okay? And the next oblong number happens to be a 3 by 4 number. That's 12. That's the number 12. The number 12 is an oblong number. It's not a square number, but it is an oblong number, and it's the sum of the even numbers. 2 plus 4 plus uh, 6 gives this 12. The omen for 6 as an oblong number, to get the next oblong number is number 6. And if I add the next number, 8, that would give me the next oblong number. So, for example, 
the third oblong number is 3 times 4. Uh, and so the Greeks knew how to add uh, the, all, all the all even numbers. When you add the even numbers, uh, you get uh, an oblong number, which is just uh, n times n plus 1. n times n plus 1. When you add the odd numbers, you get n squared if you add the first n uh, odd numbers, like I showed you before. Now, another number that the Greeks played with is triangular numbers. They also made numbers into triangles. So if you have the number 3, that's not a square number, and it's not an oblong number. You can't actually make it into a rectangle, but you can make it into a triangle. So 3 is the first triangular number for the Greeks. And then to get the next triangular number, you add 3 more to it. That's 6. That's a triangular number. And 6 is also an oblong number, but it's, so here's an example where you have one number, it's, it's both types. You, if you add 4 to this 6, you get 10, which is the next triangular number. Now, the Greeks, this was actually the most perfect number. Uh, I'm sorry, for the Pythagoreans, this was the most perfect number. Uh, they called this uh, the per a perfect number. 10 It's the best number of anything they had. And they liked something about this triangle. This was their symbol. This was a, uh, it stood for health. And for them, this was really great. Um, the single, po single unit, that stood for the point. Two units stood for a line, because it takes two points to make a line. Three units stood for a plane, because it takes uh, three points to make a plane. And then these four stood for a, uh, a, a, a solid, because you can make a, a small pyramid with four of these. So anyway, this is, this is the uh, uh, fourth triangular number, and it's the sum of the first four integers. And here's where we get out to, to Gauss now. In other words, the sum of the consecutive integers produces the nth triangular number. And the Greeks knew, uh, the Pythagoreans knew all about this. Now, one thing that they discovered was that if you take an oblong number, like in this case, I'm going to put, the, this is the fourth triangular number. I, I, I just moved those over to make it like this. But this is actually half of an oblong number. So if I fill in the other half like this, okay, this is an oblong number. It's 4 by 5. It's actually the number 20. But if you draw a line down the middle of this, like this, you'll see that on one side is uh, the, the triangular number 10, and on the other side is the triangular number 10. And each of those triangular numbers is uh, the sum of a consecutive number of integers. So if I wanted to sum the first four integers, that's the fourth triangular number. That's actually half of the fourth oblong number. The fourth oblong number is 4 times 5. So to sum the numbers, the first four integers, you multiply 4 by 5 and divide by 2. Because it's half the triangular number, the fourth triangular number, is half of the fourth oblong number. So to get uh, the sum of the numbers from 1 to 100, if you take the 100th oblong number, which would be 100 times 101, you then divide it by 2 to get the 100th triangular number. Now, this, this was, to the Pythagoreans, they, this was the sort of stuff they, 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 they knew. Now, this is another way mentally to imagine how the sum of the first, get an easy formula for the sum of the first n integers. It's, it's n times n plus 1 divided by 2, and that gives you the sum of the first n integers. That's just another way to do it. So, that's all.